This video shows a demonstration of the Linux Evaluation Kit for Actel SmartFusion that is available from MCraft Systems. First of all, let's see how to set up the A2F Linux Evaluation Board that comes as part of the kit. The board gets power from the USB port, so all you need to do to get it powered is plug the USB cable into a free USB port on your laptop or PC. From the PC, that USB connection is visible as a serial interface which gives you easy access to the serial console of the board. The only other connection you need to make to set up the board is to plug it into your LAN using a standard Ethernet cable. On power up and reset, the board is configured to immediately bootstrap Linux and then mount the demo application. Here is a real-time view of the bootstrap sequence as shown in the board serial console. Now let's scroll back to take a closer look at the bootstrap sequence. The A2F Linux board comes with a U-Boot firmware pre-programmed into the ENVM of the SmartFusion and a Linux image pre-programmed into the external flash memory available on the board. U-Boot runs from the ENVM and uses the embedded SRAM of SmartFusion as storage for volatile data. Having completed the basic initialization, U-Boot configures the memory controller to allow access to the external SRAM and flash memory and then copies the Linux image from flash to RAM and jumps to the Linux kernel entry point. It is possible to interrupt the auto boot sequence by hitting a key before U-Boot starts relocating the Linux image to SRAM and thus enter the command line interface of U-Boot. However, assuming no operator intervention, U-Boot proceeds to boot Linux up as soon as possible. As the Linux kernel proceeds to bootstrap, one of the initialization steps it performs is initialization of the Ethernet driver for the SmartFusion MAC interface. The target is configured to assign a predefined IP address to the MAC interface. However, the kernel can of course be reconfigured to obtain an IP address from a DHCP server on the host. The Linux kernel is configured to mount a root file system in RAM using the init RAM FS file system. Init RAM FS is populated with required files and utilities at kernel build time and then is simply linked into the Linux image. Init RAM FS doesn't have hard limits on its size and is able to expand using otherwise unused memory on the target. As a first test, let's get access to a file tree on the development host through an NFS mounted file system. Now we have access to a file system shared between the development host and the SmartFusion target, which allows for some very convenient development processes. As an example, let's develop a very simple Linux application. On the development host, I create and edit the application source file and then cross build it for Linux. Now let's try running the application on the target. As you can see, the NFS mount makes built binaries immediately available on the target, which allows you to load and debug them without having to reflash or even reboot the target. Clearly, the same approach can be used to debug Linux device drivers. As a next test, let's start the web server. Now let's try connecting to the web page provided by the demo. You can see a real-time view of some parameters of the target operation available on the internet. And even a penguin can fly with SmartFusion. Now let's start the Telnet server. Let's create a Telnet connection to the target 
from the development host and then set up the target date and time. As you can see, the correct date and time are now reported by the board at the web page. This presentation has shown just a few basic things that you can do with Linux on SmartFusion. Clearly, much more is possible with Linux.